Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I wanted to show you how to use the Arnold Mix Shader in Maya 2018. These are three shader balls that I have set up for you, and you can download these files in academicphoenixplus.com. You can download them for free so you can follow along. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is create two shaders, and then we're going to mix them together with a third one. So let's make our selection, and I'm going to assign a new material. It's going to be Arnold. I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to grab the AI surface standard. I have a previous tutorial where I go over several shader attributes, including base, specular, transmission of subsurface. I also went over preset. Let's go ahead and say we have car paint metallic. And if we take a look at our scene, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and relabel my AI standard into car paint. All right. So far, so good. The next one we want to go ahead and assign a new shader, so assign a new material, right click assign new material, Arnold AI standard surface. And let's say in this example the metal gets scratched and we see underneath it a different material and let's go ahead and select chrome. So that way it looks like this gets scratched and then underneath it you're going to see something very reflective. So let's take a look at what that looks like. This is pretty reflective, I'm not a big fan of having perfect mirrors, so I'm going to go ahead and increase my roughness just a little bit. about 2.7. I kind of like that look, so it's not perfect. You guys are more than welcome to go ahead and manipulate the shaders, but I'm going to go ahead and move forward. All right, let's take a look at this one, which is going to be our mix. To mix two shaders together, we need to go into the hypershade. Let's go to the hypershade. And the first one you'll notice is that over here we have um, all of our shaders are basically piling up. But over here, I created, I click on this little plus sign and created a separate tab for my shader so I can build it. So in this case, I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to type in mix. And that brings me the AI mix shader. I'm going to click on that. AI mix shader has an SG node and that SG node means that it's something that you can render. Notice that I have shader one and shader two. So that means that I have grabbed the shaders and put it on top of one another. I'm going to go ahead and select the mix shader, middle mouse and drag car paint onto shader one, and then middle mouse and drag my chrome in shader two. Now I noticed that this one, my chrome, I did not label, so that's why I got a little lost there, so that's not good. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go ahead and change this to chrome. So labeling is important, no doubt about that. Okay, so when I take a look at my mix shader, I have my car paint and I have my chrome, and I'm going to assign this to the object. Now there's several ways you can add a mix shader, or any type of shader. You can always middle mouse and drag it to the object, or you can always select it right click, assign existing material, and then use AI mix shader. All right, let's see what it looks like in Arnold. Expand this a little bit. I'm gonna just make a selection here because I don't need to see anything else. And what's going on is that we're seeing 50% of both shaders. Take a look at this number, we have a weight of 0.5. So that means the shader is being driven by 50% of each. So for example, if I go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, move this to the left, the car shader is going to be dominant. And if I move it all the way to the right, the chrome is going to be dominant. So we can manipulate this using a shader. Okay, so what I'm going to do is click on this little checker and let's go ahead and add a checker. So right away you can see that the colors are now working with each other. That one, the white is driving the chrome and the black is driving the car paint, right? So you can kind of have this really interesting looking shader. Let's go ahead, go back, right click, oops, right click and hold and then break connection. Let's go ahead and have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to use another sh shader called AI Noise on this little guy right here, which basically is going to show you your inputs and your output connections. And you can see that this is my car paint and this is my chrome. And then of course, this is my mix. Now, if I scroll in a little bit, I can see the mix is right here, which is what I can connect. Whoops. And obviously when I click on something, it gives you a little tail. Okay. So let's go ahead and find a noise. I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to hit AI. I'm going to look for that noise. This is a black and white image. I will show you what that looks like. And let me go ahead and connect the out color to the mix and see what we get. Now it's giving me an error. It's telling me that it can't really connect. And the reason why it's because the, I need to zoom in. I'm gonna hit this little plus button. 
it's actually RGB and the mix is only driven by zeros and one, which is white and black. So what we can do is grab the RGB or just the R by opening up this plus button, drag, oops, gr grab the R and drag it into the mix and it will accept it. Go ahead and take a look. And so far we're not seeing anything. So what's cool about the Arnold renderer is that I can click on this guy right here. It's called isolate select. So what that means is that when I click on one of these shaders, it will show me the shader and how what its effect on the model. So I can click on the chrome and you can see just the chrome. I can click on the noise. So I can go ahead and start making some adjustments to the octave. So this gives me a little bit higher quality noise. I can play around with the scale. So let's say three by three by three. And I can kind of play around a little bit more with the noise. And then once I have that, I can click on this and see the results. Right away, you can see that I am getting these really nice results where you can see the car paint and the chrome in a, a little bit more organic. But the issue though, is that it's way too soft. So if I wanted to create something a little bit more realistic, like the paint's being scratched off or it's being worn away, I need this to have a sharper edge. And if you look at reference, that's how it works. Uh, you, you rarely have a nice little fading. You actually have very, very sharp lines. So let's go ahead and fix that. So to fix that, we actually need to create what's called an, a range. This will give us more control over our black and white images. So I went ahead and disconnected that and type in AI range. There it is. So I'm gonna grab my output color, put it in the input, and then I'm going to select my out color. Same story, if I try to grab the out color we had, which has RGB, it will not do it. See how it turns gray? But this is a black and white image, so I'll go ahead and grab the R, which is just red, and mix, put it in the mix. Okay, so here's the noise, here's the range, and this is the effect that it has so far. So I'm gonna go back to the range, so if I grab the input min and I start increasing it, notice how much it starts to make the black more dominant. So a little bit of speckles of white. So let's see what that looks like on our shader. So it gives us a feeling that the, there's just a tiny little dents in the car paint. And then you can see the chrome below, which is a pretty neat effect. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our range and let's see what happens if we put this back to zero and then we start decreasing the input max. I'm gonna go ahead and notice that now I'm getting the exact opposite effect. The, the white is completely dominant and the black is just tiny little speckles. So let's see what it looks like on the shader. And so now it looks like the chrome just got splattered with some car paint. With the AI range, it gives you control. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring that back a little bit. And let's take a look at the output min and the input min. So if we start increasing these values, you're gonna see that it starts to kind of fade things. So if you didn't want black and white and everything in between, you can actually just kind of fade it into gray. So AI range really gives you a nice control over things. Same thing, this will just make it into a darker gray. I still wanna see some of that noise. I want it to be predominantly car paint. And so I go like that, went the wrong way. Let me go ahead and bring this back up and go this direction. So I'm getting a better, a better look. Let me go ahead and just tighten up those numbers a little bit. Sometimes it might be better to actually type them in. So maybe 0.7, something like that. And I'm getting a nice, a nice effect. That is the basics of the Arnold Mix Shader. I also wanted to show you a fun little thing where you can make it look like the car paint is just fading away. So have you seen those before, those animations? I'm gonna show you how to animate your shader. So for example, when we clamp this like so, and it's almost completely white, it's completely chrome, right? And then when we go the other way, this becomes, let's say one, and then it becomes all black, almost completely black, we now have car paint. So why don't we animate that? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like this. I'm gonna right click. Let me make sure I'm in the right section here, all right. Hopefully you guys know how to uh, animate, otherwise this might be a little bit confusing, but uh, select this, make sure you're in frame one, input min and max, right click, set key, right click, set key. So that means that these two inputs have a key. Then I'm gonna go to, let's say frame 15. I'm gonna change my values. Again, I'm kinda looking at this. It's not gonna, unfortunately, it's not gonna really give me a good preview because it thinks it's keyframed, but I do know that these values are gonna work. I'm gonna right click, set key, right click, set key. There you go. So now if I start animating this, it's going to look like it's going from car paint all the way to chrome.
So let's see what that looks like. Turning this off, let's go to the beginning, frame one. There it is, it looks like car paint. And then I'm going to start scrolling through the time frame and you're gonna see that it's starting to, it almost looks like the car paint's fading away and then it turns into chrome. So this is a great way to make it look like time-lapse or uh, maybe you're trying to transform something into a different type of texture. This would be the way to drive it. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I know this was a really fast tutorial. Hopefully that uh, wasn't too fast. Let me know if you have any questions. You can always email me or you can just leave a comment below. I'm always reading my comments. Feel free to give me feedback. Do you like these tutorials? Do you wanna see more? All right, so yes, if you can go to academicphoenixplus.com, you could download these files. Also, you can sign up for my newsletter. My newsletter will give you pre-release content so that you will have access to videos ahead of schedule. You will also get uh, invites to streaming and workshops. Definitely check out academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you again for listening. I truly appreciate your support, and I will see you next time.